Ay, eto, eto. Bro, what's up, bro? bro. Tata, hindi kong style ka na ngayon, ha? Ah. <laughs> ako, BBM style ako, medyo Grand Prix. <laughs> hindi ako magpipi... Ah, hindi, yung, yung, yung BBM style, yung, yung BBM style, yung parang sa tatay niya, yung polo barong na... Oo, oh, correct, correct. Uh, correct. Ay, alam na, alam mo, in fairness, ha? Actually... Somebody, some some sartorial historian actually needs to talk about yung fashion, yung ini-indicate ang fashion ng mga presidente natin eh. Kasi I, I remember Manolo telling me na yung fashion ni BBM was, uh, my dad pala, my dad, napansin niya parang he dresses like his father. And parang, but, and it's 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 very subtle, di ba? Yung, yung hints ni BBM, what he's reproducing from his father are yung mga innocuous things about his father. Eh? It's like, he reproduces his father's voice. He reproduces his father's clothes. But he's not going to kill like his fa- his father. He's not going to raid the central bank like his father. Alam mo parang I- I'm subtly hinting um, that I'm I'm my father's side. Very subtle, very innocuous. Yeah, he plays on the nostalgia clearly. I mean, even mm-hmm. the style of his speech and all. When I once kasama ka sa gamit sa CEO for a talk, ah, uh, oh, he's looking like his dad literally, and he's oh. speaking like his dad. So clearly, he's playing on the nostalgia game. Oh. But he's nothing like it if if you see him off the record. Like he's such a oh. He's Tito. Like, uh, tsaka hindi siya, hindi siya, hindi siya baduy like his dad pag kinuso, oh, pag, 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 yung, yung si Marcos kasi, kahit pag gini-interview, oratoric, oratorical magsalita, well, uh, the Philippines is a country with a lot of, <laughs> it's gonna magsalita si Marcos even during an interview, but if you interview the son, he, he talks like a normal person, right? He's, normal he's not, normal. he's not pompous, he's like, like a pompous lawyer like his father. And um, so I, I like his speaking style a lot more than his father's speaking style. Um, and very subtle guy, my ini- things sa sinisignal, di ba? Papatutug niya, Pilipinas kong mahal. Pero hindi niya papatutug, theme of bagong lipunan, di ba? Sakto oh, lang. Oh, diba? Saktong nostalgia lang. No? Yeah, pero before we go to BBM and then we talk about economy and all, kamo sa yung fashion naman ni Sara Duterte sa'yo? May mga nagko-comment dito na, na anong anong basa mo kay Sarah kasi galit na galit siya pero ang happy ng colors niya parating white, bright color, tas naka-Coachella pa siya last year with shades, ganun. Ay yung yung hangin, 'di ba yung Pardon. parang nag nag yung nag-crop, yung nag-crop. Ito ba yung nag-crop? Coachella ya to, no? Coachella. What's going on? Oh, <laughs> hindi ako fashion, hindi ako fashion historian pero ba, meron ba diyan, meron ba diyan, meron bang interested mag-comment sa evolving oh, fashion ng mga presidente natin? <laughs> ano sabi? Ano sabi? Papayit na tindi ba? Off the record. <laughs> Sensei mami, baka mapamak tayo. Well, I mean... Ano sabi, ano sabi ng mga kaibigan natin? Mamaya, isend ko yung screenshot dito. O, bahala kayo. Mag-comment <laughs> kayo siya. <laughs> wait lang, bro. Wait lang. Balik. Mag-comment, mag-comment kayo ng konti kasi hindi naman ako fan. Hindi naman kami sartorial expert si Richard eh. <laughs> okay, okay. Let's go back to this. Before we we go back to BBM and and Philippine Economy. Ano 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 tingin mo dun sa response ni Sarah dun sa mga confidential phone? Galit na galit siya yung uh, doesn't that prove that she's still really a Duterte at the end of the day because I keep on hearing no this daughter is this and that going to be different from the dad. Like I kind of see that but I I don't. Like I kind of see that but I don't. Eh. Yung instinct, yung response the same eh. Securitize pag inkinitize mo ako 10 times ko ibalik sa yo like it's it's you know digong minus the digong fluidity minus the digong humor minus the digong you know humor nga yun nga eh wala kaya nga sa tingin ko kaya nga sa tingin ko mas mabilis mo sakang rate ang rating kaysa sa tatay eh di ba kasi yung tatay mapipikon mga asar pero kasi patatawanin ka ito hindi and then of course it must be said na yung numbers are really gendered, di ba? One of the reasons why mas mabilis mo magsak si Sarah kaysa sa tatay niya is because it, it is really more different. Obviously, I'm not sympathetic to Sarah, pero I'm sympathetic to female yeah, politicians. Yeah, yeah, I'm, a... I'm sympathetic to female politicians in the Philippines as a whole because it really is harder for them. And let... The, eto BS to ah, na parang ah, wala tayong problem with female politicians because we've elected Arroyo, we've elected um Aquino. They won despite being women. You know, meron talaga, if you look at the numbers, it is really harder to become president of the Philippines kung babae ka. So, tinatamaan si Sarah partially because, you know, she she can't, she she doesn't have the capacity to engage in the macho stick that her father did. Because people still ultimately read her as female and that's really sad. But at the same time, you know, the bigger problem here is that Sarah is like, you know, Sarah is pikon like her father. 
minus the humor, minus. I mean, mm. but let's not forget uh, what ninety percent of the coup d'etats in the past thirty years or so were against Corazon Aquino and Arroyo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, misogyny. Gender pa rin ang politics atin, bro. Oh. So I mean, it cannot get more brutally, you know, in your face than that. I mean, just mm. I think there's a strong correlation. No offense to our friends uh, out there who have been, you know, launching all these coups, no, including my wife, bigan natin iba yan, de ba? Um, uh, nisa mayor na ngayon si Kat. <laughs> okay, mama na tayo pag-usapan. Now, uh, park muna natin mga Duterte's because vice president lang naman siya. Let's now go to the national presidential level, bro. Now, before talking about the Philippine economy, because clearly one big problem for BBM, and as I argued in a recent piece, and I've been arguing, the Philippines doesn't have only the rice price food inflation problem. It's going to face more problems as we discussing artificial intelligence, effect on DPO industry. Some studies say up to 70% of jobs could be affected before the end of the decade. And then we also have this problem of, you know, not much FDI is coming in. It's going to Vietnam, it's going to Thailand, etc. So we have some serious problem there. And it looks like I'm still not hearing this magic word or term, industrial policy. It doesn't seem to come... Like, ang dami na kikriticize kay BBM, Maharlika Fund, etc. It's all all the usual attack from the perspective of good governance. But this was always my frustration with liberal opposition in the Philippines. They don't talk about, you know, industrial policy, trade policy. And you are right now in the United States, the heartland of global capitalism. And yet, not long ago, both President Biden and re-election is soon uh, Donald Trump, former president. They were uh, not, cl- one of them just joined, right? The auto workers strike <laughs> in, in, in the heartland of American, you know, industry. And then you had Trump come in and say, no, no, I'm even more real than Biden in protecting you against exploitative capitalism and all of that. Like this is happening in the United States. Both Biden and Trump are pro labor unions, pro pro auto workers. I mean, this is crazy, bro. This is crazy. And both of them, are America first in terms of their manufacturing strategy, etc. So, can we first talk about the United States and then talk about the Philippines? Because parati naman tayo copycat sa US. Kasi, di ba yung US yung tinatarget talaga ni Biden at saka ni Trump is the white working class na for most of yung high era of tinatawag natin high neoliberalism, 80s to 90s, yung globalize lahat. Napag-iwanan dahil globalize mga economy and a lot of the jobs went to places like China and Mexico, yung production jobs. And so that that population got alienated and therefore that population started to vote for populists like Trump. Now, for Trump, the calculus is I want to maintain that populist base. For Biden, I want to take some of that populist base so that I can reconstitute yung alliance ng labor and Democrats. Because that was a long-standing alliance from the 1940s, um, Panoni FDR, until, you know, until the 70s and maybe until the, the 80s. Okay, Malakas ang alliance ng... Ha? Malakas ang aliansa ng Democrats at saka ng white working class. Nixon, diba? Until Nixon uh, and Reagan played into the culture wars to divide. Yeah, the- before the culture wars. So, napagtanto ngayon ni Biden na kung gusto niyang bawiin yon from the Republicans, particularly non-college educated white working class that he needs to talk about industrial policy, needs to talk about giving them jobs. And so, now they 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 met and um this uh, and now there's really a pushback against the idea that you can just let your country globalize and that you don't need to do anything to promote certain industries. So, uso yun ngayon sa US. So, the time is right, bro, di ba? Kasi naalala ko, I mean, growing up, when we were in college, when, even when we when we were in college, when we were in high school, nobody really talked about industrial policy. Even during our early academic years, medyo badu yung idea ng industrial policy. Parang ano, if you talked about industrial policy, parang ano ka, parang galing kang, parang ano, badu yung Marxist from the 60s, di ba? Pero hindi, ngayon, the, the, ano, may, ngayon pinag-uusapan na siya. So, may idea, di ba, yung, uh, may, may sinasabi yung strike while the iron is hot. The iron is hot, hot for industrial policy right now. I want to talk, ask you a question about how your views have evolved with respect to industrial policy. Kasi ako, aminin ko, mas bata ako, parang hindi ko ganang iniisip. Kasi hindi nga top of mind sa mga tao eh. No, no, I mean, I was always a geek for made in this country or made in that country. I mean, remember like 9, 10 years old, I was talking about JVC. Where did JVC come from? I was obsessed about how Korea over this because I did Taekwondo diba? so I, I had a lot of interaction with Koreans and I would always hear about how their parents were so poor and how suddenly Korea within a generation became a wealthy country and I always wondered like wow that's amazing so I was very curious about how Korea went from one of the poorest countries in the world right uh, Kaleveling Ghana right in the 50s and 60s even poorer than the Philippines at some point 
and then now one of the richest countries on earth no and one of the most developed so i realized early on in life literally like wala pa akong teenager i realized that countries that are strong in manufacturing have a you know good chance of moving up the ladder so what i spent a lot of my undergraduate and, and beyond to study was uh the trade and industrial policy strategy of this so-called newly industrialized nations right taiwan where a country i spent some time with as a visiting scholar south korea but also you know in other places like in the world like for instance brazil right brazil has a very large auto mm-hmm. manufacturing and also a bear yung kanilang aircraft uh, actually mm-hmm. yung crash na yung uh, yung guy yung 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 mutiny guy sa sa russia mm-hmm. diba uh Pregozhov, right he, he was actually riding a brazilian aircraft but i mean I, i'm sure i'm sure uh-huh. it doesn't have to do with the safety of brazil if something happened you know, but but you get what i'm saying like uh, like you know even in russia they use brazilian you know um uh, airplanes etc and now turkey is another interesting case thailand was one of the countries that really amazed me for a long time they're uh, i think they're number six or seven in the world in terms of total auto manufacturing industry so and i realized my likos sa kotse diba i mean not that i have cars but my likos sa kotse so i got to know a lot of cars in the philippines the japanese are from thailand now from indonesia so from a very young age bro until now i've been obsessed about manufacturing kaya nakita mo vinfast diba i've been very excited about this so i always had this kind of a boyish uh, obsession with manufacturing so i i really try to understand why the philippines could not replicate what a lot of our neighbors were able to replicate was there something peculiar about us right <laughs> and and that's why we had our first episode where we discussed how it was a conspiracy of initial advantages and then complacency and then oligarchy mm. capture that prevented us from really uh fulfilling our full potential uh, in the first wave of global industrialization right so our hope is as now we move into the fourth industrial revolution or i would say second wave of global industrialization sun and the philippines can can ride on this because who would i mean you you ask someone 50 60 years ago and you would say like south korea and thailand and these countries will be industrialized by this time they would are you kidding me right they would say it's unbelievable mm. they would rather say mm. argentina or turkey right they would hey. rather say czech republic right or they would rather say philippines for that matter right So in the same vein what should prevent the Philippines pulling off the kind of unexpected magic that these countries were able to expect to pull off back in the day or or look at India for instance right now i mean it's it has a lot of problems but a lot of manufacturing is also moving to india a huge chunk mm-hmm. of our samsungs today are going to be made in india more and more apple 8% are going to be made in india iphone 15s a lot of them are going to be made in india these things were unthinkable 5 10 15 years ago everyone's saying india is just ppo industry so in short bro if you look at it I don't think nasa dugo yan. In, in, India nasa jean na pag Korean ka, you're meant to make LG and Hyundai. It doesn't work that way. It's yeah. something that's constructed through policy and state, state-backed state uh, kind of industrialization. Yeah. yeah. I, I I want to refer people to this book. Um, kasi ito hindi ito pinag-iisipan. Eh. It's called Demanding Devaluation Exchange Rate Politics in the Developing World by David A. Steinberg. And, and yung argument ni Steinberg is, Devaluing your currency if you're a developing country is a no-brainer. You should have a cheap currency if you're a developing country because it boosts your export and it helps with industrialization. So yung tanong ni Steinberg is, why are, effectively, why are there countries, developing countries that are so stupid as to want to revalue their currency every single time? Um, and his answer is maybe applicable to the Philippines and essentially tinitingnan niya yung concentration of capital. Kung may correlation kung mas mataas yung... Co- No shit, kung mas mataas yung concentration of capital sa importers kaysa sa exporters or kung ganun yung setup, eh di, a country will not demand the devaluation. Um, and you know, that's par- probably the case in the Philippines because in the 1950s, we really supported a lot of importers and we 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 pegged our industrialization on that kind of ISI. Pero uh, I think inadequate yung Steinberg uh, because I think um, we really need to think about our psychological obsession with a strong currency that prevents us from doing it. So I, I would like to refer again people to uh, Professor Fabeles where nung, nag, nung nag all-time low yung peso nung, nung October, last, uh, uh, October last year, all-time low yung peso. Sabi ni Fabela, well, I'm paraphrasing and I'm putting words in his mouth, but more or less, um, kinain na natin yung inflation, so damage is done, stick na to yung level na yun, so that when investors come they know that we'll keep it low because the valuation only works if you signal to the market na this peso will be cheap for a very long time so you can invest in exports if you signal to the market na patataasin ko ulit yan the exporters will just go out kasi useless alam naman na tataas ulit yan 
So, um, sabi ni Fabella at that time, in, in September, October of last year, sabi niya, um, this is a good opportunity for us because kinain na natin yung inflation, mababa, na yung, mababa yung peso, we should stick to it. Pero sabi niya, if history is any indicator, we will revalue and nothing will happen. And true enough, um, late October, early November, sabi ni uh, Secretary Diok, no, we will defend the value of the peso. So, tama na naman si, ta- tama na naman si Fabella. Um, that's... Uh, that, and and somebody I was I was giving a lecture just this weekend. Sabi, sabi, sabi ko, parang a lot of people think na in order to solve the problem in the Philippines, you need to kill the oligarchs. That's the only way to solve it because oligarchs ruin everything. And sabi ko, yeah, oligarchs ruin a lot of things, but there are th- certain things you can do short of killing all the oligarchs because I don't think you can. Um, and the short short term thing that you can do is actually just devalue devalue the devalue the freaking peso. Um, it's so, and, and bro, it's so going, back to, sorry, going back to the examples I mentioned, South Korea did not kill its oligarchs; it bullied its oligarchs to become more. Uh, that's so right. That's right. Channel their energy in the right direction, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and one way to channel the energy of your oligarchs in the right direction is to tell them, if you invest in exports, we will support you. We will support you if you invest in exports. Oh, bro, because ang intindi ko dito sa Pilipinas, the reason why the value of pesos is, is, is you know, it's just kind of a totemic, but but also it's very politically sensitive is because marami sa ating oligarchs and businesses have dollar-denominated debt. So if the Philippine ah. value goes up, their, their, their real debt goes up. And then the OFW aspect, you know, the OFWs are always happy, di ba, if the value of dollar is higher, diba? So, so th- there's a countervailing kind of situation there, you know? That it, so, for me, it's a question of balance of forces also. It's a question of lobbying. It's a question of... Well, but for me, more fundamentally, the problem is that wala tayong vocabulary of industrial policy. Like, last year, I think, was... The Imagination, yeah, yeah. Wala eh. Like, you're right. Fabelia kind of discussed it and then our for- medallia kind of hinted at it. But he didn't really spell it out eh, in ways that you would expect it in a country like France, in a country like even Japan, etc. Like in other countries, talking about industrial policy is normal for many years now. I mean, since Trump essentially, right? Uh, uh, so if if America can talk about industrial policy so openly, so should so should we? And for some reason, parang even Medali was tiptoeing around that. He, he should have explained it all the way. Why is it good for us to be a manufacturing oriented country? What, it, what you know, you're like, well, like, they didn't go down the road, they, they just said, Yeah, maybe you know, cheaper exports, you know, it's better for us, blah blah blah, and then that's it, and it stopped. You know, the bus, so... Na, uh, one reason is because nakakatakot din naman. Um, because one element of industrial policy, let's face it, is picking winners, the, the state says this industry is good, we will pour resources into this industry. Alam mo naman magisi pang Pilipino, eh, pag narinig niya, may yung gobyerno may susuportahan. Ang isipin kaga ng Pilipino corruption. So the Filipino will say, Oops, tigil mo yan, kasi corrupt yan eh. You cannot engender corruption in any way because the Philippines is just too corrupt for industrial policy. And I think we should uh, accept, um, and this is maybe a controversial statement, um, that there will be corruption. Kaka in talagat tayo ng konting corruption for industrial policy to happen. The Japanese ate some corruption, the Koreans ate some corruption, and we will have bad investments. We will have bad investments. Korea still has corruption. Korea still has corruption. That's true. And also, may may, may mga investments na papalpak. The government choosing winners, saying, I will encourage this sector. You know, it will make mistakes. But the government should be allowed to make mistakes. Lahat naman ng negosyante, like if you know, part of part of industrial policy is the state starts to think entrepreneurially. Diba? It's not just the businesses that think entrepreneurially. The state thinks entrepreneurially. And if you talk to talk to any entrepreneur, they're ready to fail. Diba? No, no great entrepreneur is not ready to fail because success only happens if you fail in your investments. And Filipinos will have to face this. We need we, we there will be failures if we engage in industrial policy. There will be corruption scandals if we engage in industrial policy. But that doesn't mean that the entire that the entire concept is bankrupt. Because for every failure, you might have one great success, and you might develop your own your Filipino Samsung. You might develop your Filipino Sony, and it makes it worth it. That's that, 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 that's my thinking. Are like a fund be used to support certain industries? I mean, like you right? know, if we push the logic here, right? Ah, you marlika fund them, pwede. Kasi 
looks like they were willing to take a lot of punches for Maharlika Sovereign Wealth Fund. They said they were willing to take punches for industrial policy and supporting certain... Oh, okay. okay. But, bro, I want to ask you this. Um, okay, Of course, both of uh, us have progressive training. So my, my, I won't say biases, but we have an instinctive... I was instinctive... Uh, not much suspicion, but uh, like ambivalence, I'll put it, towards the big business people in the Philippines, right? Like, I'll be honest, some of that, so I've met a lot of them. They're, some of them are really nice people in person. I'm not going to name who. But at the end of the day, I know a lot of them got rich, if not all of them, you know, through not necessarily competitive practices, right? And uh -huh. No shit. Yeah. yeah. No shit, right? I mean, as one friend of mine said, you know, who, who, who was kind of involved in Hollywood stuff and was hoping to do something in the Philippines, and parang, puti pa sa Korea, mga oligarchs nila, the next generation, they support the next generation. But sabi na dito, sanay sila gumawa ng easy money. Eh. Like, sanay mga oligarchs here to easy money, high extractive kind of industries, easy profit, gano'n. So there, there, it looks like the appetite for really risky, you know, like things like automobile manufacturing, etc. seems to be lower. Although, I would argue that EV industry is much more easy. Oh, it's much easier because Hindi mo na kailangan mag-develop ng, ng, ng engine, no? Like like before. But speak, but I want to ask you, bro. Having said that, that you and I inherently have ambivalence, not only because of our scholarly training, but because of our progressive orientation. I mean, let's just be honest about this. But do you think we could have some sort of quote unquote? Kung my good Machiavelli, sabi ng ex professor, can we have good oligarchs in the Philippines? Do we have good oligarchs? I mean, we know Aboitis is our close to the president. Uh, you know, Ayala's are also kind of there in the mix in ways that they were not during Digong's time. Do you think these peoples could be vectors of uh, industrial, they could be our next chables? As yeah, I, and I mean, this is probably where we'll, both of us will disagree with our friend Joseph Scalise, diba? because Joseph Scalise hates the fact that the left collaborates with a national industrial class, diba? and he thinks that's the sin of the the left. I, I kind of agree that the left made the sin of working with a national industrial class. But my argument there is that they work with the wrong national industrial class, a kind of import-dependent national industrial class. Now, if the left had worked with a productive export-dependent, uh, export-promoting export national class, then I think the left-wing politics would have been different in the Philippines. Yun yung, yun yung kind of difference ko kay, say, kay Joseph. And yeah. if you want to know what Joseph says, um, I, I'll just refer you to yung podcast ni Richard with Joseph where com comprehensively bring down ni Joseph yung kanyang argument. At, at, three hours. Ka naman, three and a half. At, pero yung maganda sa'yo, sumagot ka naman. You guys had a friendly conversation and you did point out that you had that difference with him then. I and, and then Joseph almost got in a long debate about whether communism, you know, had the rot at the center of the, you know, the apple. And for me, it was mm. rotten from the very beginning. He is the more Trotsky type of guy. No, Stalin. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah. No, I don't buy that. I'm more like in the Stephen Kotkin school of thought, right? When it comes to these things. No. Um, but no, I love that conversation. Now, now, honestly, bro, do you think historically we have had or do we have some of these quote unquote big conglomerates who could become our chain? How can we go from from conglomerates to chables or from oligarchs to to global national champions i mean do we have it among us do we have those kind of people that with the right state policy and the state bureaucracy we can do do we have even the bureaucrats to do that i mean you, you have made the whole business cottage industry out of bashing so far wrong, wrong technocrats yeah, 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 yeah. you know what i'm saying i'm pushing the, the the conversation already here but i felt we have reached a point that we have to already discuss the next well, step we have what it well, takes uh, ano bang ano bang binabasa mo dito kasi ang classic ko pa rin na binabasa in terms of yung development ng bureaucrats for an industrial state is yung yung trabaho ni Chalmers Johnson di ba and Chalmers 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 Johnson um I recommend the book uh he, about MITI which is yung Ministry of Trade and Industry ng Japan he talks about yung close relationship ng MITI MITI and Tokyo University Law so Tokyo University Law for the yung high point ng industrial policy sa MITI. Yung top graduates ng Tokyo University Law mag-graduate yan into MITI. And so there was this natural uh, there, there there was this natural feeding into of the educational institution into uh, the most important parts of government. Wala pa tayong ganun, di ba? Because if you are a top graduate of UP Ateneo La Salle UST, like you go to the you, you, you go to the private world, di ba? Pero at that time, at the height of MITI, the most prestigious job was MITI. And um, one reason why um, the, the MITI job was a prestigious job is because after, ka mag, after you retire from MITI, 
almost guaranteed na paupuin kay sa isang board ng isang mabigat na Zaibatsu, di ba? So, kita. So, parang hihintay. So, may, may konting, may konting sacrifice. May konting sacrifice. Hindi na yeah, sure. sobrang yaman during your rookie years. You, but you retire 65, upo ka kagad sa board ng ng Toyota, kita ka na, di ba? So, may, may, may ganong ecology and and look at parang three institutions yun feeding to each other. You had Tokyo Law, you had Miti, and then from Miti, you had the Zaibatsu, right? And they're both they're they're both closely interlinked with each other. Now again, in the eyes of Filipinos, that looks like corruption. Nepotism. Because, uh, so, yeah. Nepotism. But in the eyes of the Japanese, that's actually national but that that's coordination for national interest. So again, we need to be willing to play in these murky waters where in meron talaga where it, it it will feel uncomfortable at certain points. But what what makes it feel less comfort uh, what makes it feel more comfortable is ultimately if we have in mind that the reason why we are doing this is not because of conflict of interest but because we have the common interest of promoting our country. If you look at it from that broad perspective, the end conflict of interest because the ultimate interest of the Zaibatsu of the government of Tokyo Law is promoting Japan or Japan Inc. as they called it in the 80s. Now, I mean, obviously, of course, since since the classic work on Miti, there, there are a lot of other counter criticisms, you know, more institutional approach, etc. Uh, but you're absolutely right now, you need kind of a network of best and brightest nurturing system, right? And then incubate that, and then make the most out of that, and that's what we don't have the Philippines. But that also brings me back to our argument before, no? Na we have a very libertarian American culture that demonizes mm-hmm. the state, the government. Palang the government, pag sobrang negative ang tingin ng tao sa public service sa Pilipinas compared sa Confucian states. Whether it's China, I mean, look at China today, bro. They are considered still as a uh, as a nation of innovation for public policy. I'm not no fan of Xi Jinping. I'm no fan of their 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 you know, their authoritarian system. But when it comes to civil service in China, I still buy the argument. See, Eric Chuba, you know, whatever, you TED Talk, niya, they indeed have one of the most high-level civil service guys. If you give them an assignment, they will do it better than almost anyone out there. And yun yung wala talaga tayong ganun. Yung, yung civil service na world-class, innovative, uh, well, yun nga, I don't even use the word patriotic because that's already sentimentality, you know, given na yan, di ba? But, but you super competent bureaucracy. I'm just not sure, bro. We have that. Like from my lawyer friends and contacts, I heard that competition commission during the time of Balisakan was really good. I mean, like they were impressed. Ang kulang wow. naman daw is ang galing nilang ekonomista, but hindi nila alam yung batas masyado. So nilalaro sila ng mga companies kasi sampo sila ng kaso ng kaso right and left eh. Mm-hmm. Against oligopolistic practices. So but actually, I, I interviewed Balisakan just as he was about to go into NEDA from, from Competition Commission. They are fantastic people. They're like super smart, patriotic, best and brightest economist people. You lang sabi ko, train ng mga yan sa, sa law kasi lalaroin sila ng mga oligarchs eh, uh, on competition. Kasi maraming loophole sa batas natin. No? But, but parang f- uh, ako, for me, uh, that, that could be a role model. What we had in Competition Commission, especially during Balisakan times, as a kind of a strong regulatory bureaucracy, we can also have for industrial policy. Yun lang, nasasayan ako. And, and I don't know, I, I just don't know if the UP School of Economics is creating that kind of people. It, it's creating right... Or UP, or, UP School of, or UP School of Law for that for that matter. No, 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 at all. I mean, the UP School of Law, I think, is incomparable to, to Tokyo Law School. I mean, Tokyo Law School, I mean, Abe, among others, all of them come from that background, right? It's It's more like Oxford. Right, it's like Oxford, right? I mean, look at um, uh, British Prime Minister. They're practically all Oxford or not graduate. Walang from <laughs> any other school, right? Yeah. Like walang Cambridge, walang not. Unless si wala. It's all Oxford. So they're kind of like the Oxford men of 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 Japan. You know, UP law in the in the talaga. Di ba sa UP ang training sa amin is you know government tuta na mga kapitalista or 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 oppressed. Like maling mali talaga yung education system natin because uh, ah yeah. yeah oh hindi, hindi parang hindi parang actually yeah. nung early days of hindi parang yung early days of UP and this is what I talk about in my book that parang early days of UP puputa ka UP because you will build that you build the freaking nation yeah, that nation was the goal of UP literally nation building best and the brightest come to UP regardless of your class regardless of where you are from the Philippines puputa kayo dito pag graduate nyo dito itatayo nyo yung bansa natin that's how it was imagined, eh. and and I think we can we can still we can still go back to that. 
A lot of it are like Richard, parang it's so cynical, no? Parang ang cynical kasi ng take natin, eh. Ang cynical, cynical ng take natin sa gobyerno, ang cynical ng take natin sa policy. But this is American uh, legacy, libertarian legacy. I think we were we are so negatively influenced and oh, well, our experience with the Spanish was not the best. I never has gave me a good idea of bureaucracy. Uh, I think we just have an instinctive bias against state institutions. We never appreciate yeah. it. We never appreciate it. And, uh, and, and, and uh, hindi, lang, uh, hindi lang tao to, kahit academics. So, so, There's a quote from some two people I really admire, um, Paul Hutchcroft and Emmanuel de Jos. They say, it quotes, that the power of the particularistic demands of the oligarchy ruins sound policy agenda at the national level. So what are they saying there? Policy doesn't matter. Kasi sira naman yan ng oligarchs. Eh, diba? So, so kung ganun, kung parang, that's so cynical, di ba? Parang, okay, it's it's not really, as long as you have an oligarchy, it's it's not really worthwhile thinking about sound policy because it gets ruined by the oligarchy anyway. Parang, pag ganun, parang hopeless. That's what they mean, but that's the impression it gives you, right? Hopeless like, talaga. Hopeless, hopeless talaga. Tari- no, I, I actually think that is what they mean. That is effectively what they mean, right? And maybe not they the are, Dios. The Dios has moved on from that. But see, Hodgecroft, I think that's what he means, right? Ultimately, if you don't solve the oligarchy problem, Everything else is everything else is the decoration lang. But I do think that you're right, Kanina, that you can actually divert the oligarchy into doing things that are more productive. I'll give you another quote. See Alfred McCoy. He believes, quote, that the Philippines' recurring crisis, quote, are a product of diffusion of political power and rent seeking. And then he says that leads to corruption and concentration of wealth. So again, lahat ng crisis natin is just a function of the fact na oligarchy tayo. You know, never mind that crises are actually a product of global economic contractions or bad policy. You know, it's all it's all about the rent seeking and the political. I see power. what you're doing there, bro. It's so, think... cyni- it's so cynical, man. It's so cynical because so kung ganon ang ergo ang, our conclusion is as long as di natin pinatay lahat ng oligarchs, well, we're doomed to fail. We're kind of hopeless. It, it, it's sakit eh. It's sakit pa. It's sakit. Sorry. So what you're arguing, if I, if I can put it in almost journalistic terms, is what you're saying is Philippine studies essentially became became Philippine state bashing studies, or you know Philippine is hopeless because of its oligarch studies. Oh, yes. oh, di ba nga meron pang milibro nga di ba Philippines a changeless land. <laughs> Wait, kay bigam ko yan. I I I told him man and Alice di ko hindi nawalian na sa Freedom House na yun ngayon. <laughs> na butang ko yan. Pero, but, but you're right. Sakit, you're right. Sakit, That's very orientalist. Uh, I don't want to go into yung language yan kasi uh, hindi naman I like these people I mean no, no, other they're, people they're call this, people. Uh, yeah, this you're research right. orientalist sorry, they're not go, I, I wouldn't go I, I wouldn't go that right. far I'm just like sorry, yeah. so, Paul 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 Hutchcroft ang sakit ang sakit ang sakit yun lang naman napakasakit Kuya, Kuya Pablo I call Paul Pablo diba? napakasakit Kuya Pablo Oy marunong bisayan baka nagwala. Kaya nga, kaya nga. I know I know Paul, I know Paul, will, I know Paul will hear. I know there's a good chance that Paul hears it. Kaya sasabihin ko, lalambingin ko lang siya. Kuya Pablo, napakasakit. Napakasakit. Yun lang. Hi. Bro. I love the guy by the way, so. Hi, fantastic. I mean, speaking of me, I think we should interview him also and talk to him. So. Yeah. No, bro, I mean, yeah, so you see where this discussion of ours is going. No, it started more like how may problema tayo. Anong kasaysayan, anong ugat ng problema na ito? And then ngayon biglang, let's talk about it. Can we have a second chance at industrial policy, right? Uh, now that we have a president, which is not necessarily, you know, your, your I don't know, he's not necessarily your technocratic par excellence, but he might bring in some technocrats like Mar Rojas in. He has already has smart people like Gibo there. There are smart people, you know, like you and I around who are not haters, you know, we're, we're always here to help the country. Even if we have to, you know, like, um, I don't know, like, I think there's, it's, I like, I don't know, bro, how I approach industrial policy, parang food diplomacy. Like, feeling ko, ito na yung chance finally for Filipino food to get, you know, the respect it deserves. Parang ganun, finally, this is also our chance to get, may, may ganun akong feeling, bro, like, finally, we're fighting for West Philippine Sea, blah, blah, blah. Ah, yes, yes. I can feel we're ah, in this yes, special so moment. I know it's presentist. You can you can say, oh, of course, Richard, you'll say that because this is your era. Because, of course, Richard would believe that his era is the era. But, hindi, feeling ko talaga totoo yan. Something really substantial is happening with the Philippines. I think this is our second chance for something special. Kaya nga, we're doing this podcast. You think I would have bothered to do this podcast? I don't know. If feeling ko hopeless case ng Pilipinas, hindi. I'm doing this because hindi. I know my hope ng Pilipinas. And ito, my chance na tayo, my opening na tayo, bro. Eh. Which is, at saka, remind ko lang, yun, sa mga hindi nakinig ng previous episode, there is evidence na 
some, sometimes you can actually grow despite corruption. So again, let's not be cynical here. There are countries, there are countries na yung mayaman muna bago na ayos yung corruption. Kasi para ayusin mo yung corruption, kailangan mayaman ka, you need to pay your bureaucrats well, di ba? You, you need to have a strong police force. That costs money. So there is an argument na kung walang mahirap, walang korap. As opposed to kung walang korap, walang mahirap. Eh? Kung walang mahirap, walang korap. So magpayaman tayo, mare-reduce natin yung corruption. So hindi siya, hindi siya hopeless. Hindi siya hopeless. We can do something. And, and the reason why we can do something is because of, I think Filipino are freaking creative, man. They're so creative. Um, and when we talk about tradables, diba? tradables are, are about what we can contribute to the world. Tradables, essentially manufacturing tradables, they're products of human ingenuity and human creativity. And I, I, I've never thought na may pagkukulang ang Pilipino doon. May pagkukulang ang gobyerno sa supporting Filipino ingenuity and creativity. Pero yung essential raw talent, wala tayong pagkukulang doon. We, we can yeah, capture bro, that. Ang, ang gobyerno, I, I agree with you. I'm hopeful. Yeah, but, but the thing is, yun nga eh. Like the puzzle is this. If our people are so fantastic, why our government were also out of us, right? It's not like aliens are ruling the Philippines or Singaporeans. It's still Filipinos. Bakit ganun? And my reading is because we have an inherent libertarian anti-statist uh, national culture, which we inherited from Americans largely, right? And I think that has always prevented us from doing the right thing. So there's a lot of problems with the state. There's a lot of corruption, but we keep on throwing out the baby with the bathwater. And the baby yes. is strong bureaucracy that has the industrial policy, has a trade policy, but because of our concern, because of what corruption happened in Guzman, we just don't want to do anything. Asa na lang tayo sa private sector. And then, ay, o nga pala, private sector, purang oligarchy. So, asa na lang tayo sa magtrabaho abroad or, you know what I'm saying? So, I think out of our discussion, a number of things came out, no? Including with Philippine studies at the pedagogical, epistemological level, right? I think the first thing we, 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 um, we emphasize here is we lack uh, a vocabulary of industrial policy. Even our top mm -hmm. technocrats and economists, like Medallia, he would hint at it, but he will not go all the way. Fabele is kind of there, but Fabele is still not the voice among our economists, right? He's more like yeah. the He's like the Keynes, except before Keynes was famous, right? He's like Keynes of 19, probably 1920s, right? Uh, then Keynes of 1940s. Um, and then the other thing is, you're absolutely right. I think there's a lot of demonization of the Philippine state because of the bad experiences we had under dictators, under very corrupt leaders. But that, in effect, also prevented us appreciating from appreciating what the state could deliver and should deliver in a yes. modern era. Right, yeah. And, then, Arime, uh, and third, bro, last up. Because I, I, I know, after our talk, I want to note, uh, note it down. Because thanks to you, Bri, I, I, I stumble upon many ideas that are there. And last, before tatakas to sa akin. And last is... Are, are we 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 get stuck with this moralistic debate about corruption, forgetting that empirically speaking, even many wealthy countries are still corrupt, like Korea, right? How many of their presidents end up in jail over the past twenty? And you, you, oh my God, U.S. is so corrupt. U.S. is like Mer illegally merong, corrupt. But there's a car bribery scandal now in the House of Representatives in the U.S. That's like 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 so there's a lot of moralization of politics without understanding policy, public policy, and how not to be Machiavellian about it, but right, public policy is about stability and prosperity beyond questions of morality and ethics. And I think we're still stuck in a pre-modern political thought. We're essentially pre-Machiavelli political thought in the Philippines. Parang hindi pa natin nabasa Machiavelli, Hobbes, and Bob, right? So hmm. uh, those are the three takeaways I have from our, from our discussion here. Sorry, bro, if I had to cut it because baka ma makalimutan ko, it's 1 a.m. Hindi, meron lang akong meron lang akong add. Parang ano, um, ako kasi, tayo kasi nag-graduate tayo ng college uh, or or early professionals tayo during the Aquino period, the, the second Aquino presidency. And I remember for a lot of my batchmates and people who were younger than me, shit, ang dami nilang, ang dami gusto pumasok ng gobyerno ng panahon na yun. Diba? Um, uh, say what you will about Noy Noy Aquino, but he inspired people to go into government. He, he inspired some of the best and the brightest to go into government. And uh, I think we, I see, that's I the other see, thing. Huh? That's the other thing. We need presidents like Noy Noy who will really just say, you know, best and the brightest, come work with me. And, you know, a lot of people said, oh, the Aquino administration, parang, ano yan, parang campus politics. And that, in, you know, that was not an insult. They thought it was an insult, but it wasn't. Because that meant that the best and the brightest were joining the Aquino administration. 
yung mga yung in new generation i hope I, i hope you get to feel that yung the, the, the gen z who are now graduating i hope one day we get a president or or even at the president more public officials who will make you want to join government if you don't like the president you want to don't want to join the government that's fine but there are other officials that you can you know devote your life to you know mga people like yung pagalong soto ganyan local government officials like Dibo, these are Dibo. people who will make ha huh? I mean, if people want PFA, Department of Finance, Gibo. I mean, these are decent oh. people inside government or very smart people you want to work for. Or I know to double back to our earlier conversation, Marrojas if he becomes a. Asa bili ko mabangon na si Lenny kasi na para na laos na si Marrojas sa mga people sa opposition. Like if yeah, okay. I think if Lenny had won, you would have another campus politics, but even more aggressive than the time of Aquino. But unfortunately, it didn't happen. But should that mean hmm. tapos na ng usapan? Let's just give up on the Philippines. Oh, hindi, hindi, hindi. And ikaw, bro, kasi nakikita mo eh, you're there in in California, you're an Asian, Asian, well, American, you know, Asian in America, and you're seeing other Asian Americans, they're all moving to the ranks, the Vietnamese, the Thai. So, nafe-feel mo na medyo napag-iwanan ng Pilipinas, di ba? Ako naman, because I travel a lot, I go around, nafe-feel ko yan. And for me, well, a sulking over it is pathetic. It's not gonna change anything. So, we have to engage the government, we have to help the government, Even if you know we're not a fan of the guy on top, right? Because hindi natin makontrol yung voters, but maybe we can help the number two, the number three, the number four, the long-term state building project, etc. Any final notes, bro? Because I know you know you want to do your jujitsu. I'm sorry, na patagal tayo dito sa discussion. Hindi ako actually may sakit ako naman ng jujitsu today. So um, by the way, if you jujitsu, you have the you have a cold. Don't go because you're gonna infect your partner. Oh, yeah, please don't do that. Please don't do that. Yeah. The, there was a jiu-jitsu guy I was told by my friend na MMA. He's a German guy in Singapore. Ano lang yan? Scholar din. Fantastic guy. He said there was this jiu-jitsu guy. I forgot his name. Na sa kaka, ano niya? Di ba you get staph infections if you don't do it properly? So nakaka-antibiotic siya na antibiotic hanggang wala na yung chan niya. Like he could... Oh my God. Is this okay, guy the man... champions na ano eh? Nasa, para, para sabi niya, nakaka-addict kasi yung BJJ. Well, I rather say BWJ. Nakaka-addict yung BWJ because... It's so technical, it's so cerebral that some people are so addicted they cannot take a break when they have infections yeah, and they can't still yeah. go at it. It's Malian. just it's like drugs. So please care for me. Yeah, so hindi ko gagawin yun. So I, I uh, mas uh, mas industrial policy yung focus ko ngayon kaysa sa sa yeah. BJJ. Eh, oh, bro, uh, I, 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 I don't have final thoughts, but I, I want to thank you. Um, I mean, one of the things that I am not capable of doing is writing as quickly as you do and as much as you do. And um, you're one of the few people who are actually, you know, binabaranggay mo ang social media, ang inquirer, ang presidente, ang policy people with this idea of industrial policy. And you're gonna, I hope when we look, uh, years later, when we look at the Google Ngram and tumataas yung mentions ng industrial policy sa Pilipinas, I hope na ano yan, driven yun by Richard D. Darian. No, I mean, bro, uh, I mean, then, let me say, thank you so much for that. And you know me, I mean, it goes both ways. So, medyo nagbabromance na naman tayo. But no, I mean, how should I put it? I get a lot of energy out of dealing with people like you. I mean, honestly, it would have been much lonelier because imagine all the idiots I have to deal with on my own, right? Not our supporters are fantastic people, but I, I you know who I'm talking about, right? All of these people out there who have no originality, no global outlook, no nothing like that, but you know, they have their niche and whatever. Naka enervate yon, bro. But when I talk to you, I talk to my other favorite co-host, Ronald, you know, like I, <laughs> I realize Not only are you kindred spirits, you just you also happen not to be idiots. So, so it's like so probably I'm not an idiot too, right? So by extension, right? Baka, baka naman, di ba? Baka naman I'm not having this megalomaniac moment and all. Oh, hindi mo hindi mo ika gaslight yung sarili mo into thinking something else. You have people who are. Baka nga, baka nga, baka nga I'm out of touch, di ba? You know, I'll be honest. There are times I question myself. Baka ang daming galit sa akin ng mga bashers na yun. Baka ako yung mali. And I think, hindi, may mga matalinong iba, agree sa akin eh. So, okay, go back tayo. So, so yan. So, so, I'm very thankful, bro, for, for uh, I mean, I think, di na, tapos na yung lonely moment. Because I, I know both of us had to deal with a lot of solitude mm. because of the, you know, the whole politics and intellectual environment and all. But now, it's more like, okay, let's let's get the ball rolling, bro. Let's, let's help the country. Let's push the ideas. And as I always said, bro, you never know who's listening to us. Next thing I know, mga abortis na Ayala pa lang nakikinig sa atin. Uh, because last time I checked, Ayala Museum people were listening uh, to us. So so shout out to Ayala Museum friends. All of the friends, uh, especially including yung mga nasa corporate world na hindi nagsasalita. Thank you for watching us. I know this is one of the things that a lot of Filipino people 
uh, who you know have this kind of bent for intellectual conversation are looking forward to. Uh, I'm super proud uh, that I kept you interested enough. I know you're a busy guy. You have a lot of things at your table. But I, I appreciate, bro, you <laughs> hours into talking to me, right? I, I, I hope well, I'm looking for time. And I hope something concrete comes out of this and we can build on that. Malay, mama, may seminar na tayo on industrial policy. Interdisciplinary. Historians, public policy, economists, vloggers, tiktokers, bring over. Like, let's make industrial policy sexy again. Just like in US. Para lahat tayo magsuit ng damit like you. Alam mo, alam mo, alam mo, sorry, one last thing. Maraming interested sa industrial policy and don't hate me, but si Thinking Pinoy has a great economic bind. And he is talking about industrial policy. Pinag-aaral na siya sa York University. Of course he has. I hate, think, I hate thinking Pinoy's politics. I hate his defense of Duterte. I hate his defense of of, of the Marcoses. But when he talks about um, industrial policy in a bigger state, I can see uh, intersections with him. You know? So there are people out there na parang akala mo, kaaway mo pero hindi mo kaaway on 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 certain level on certain level. Well, you been debate society my organization. Okay. Of course, lahat kami yeah, magaling yeah. kaya iba malina yung mga napuntahan sa buhay. So, I'm totally on surprise to see I, I saw in the past some of his vlogs I stumbled upon kasi sabi ng mommy ko, anak panoorin mo si thinking ko ni bakit ko pa pa na kasi ginagawa niya background mo purong books na. <laughs> so, <laughs> Walang yan. The next thing I know, yung mga analysis ng mga oligarchies, yung mga analysis ng mga ganun. So, I know he has that bent and now I think he's studying New York University. I'm like, so, yeah, you know, ako naman, bro, you know, um, politics is politics, ideology is ideology, but the national interest is national interest. And I'm willing to work with anyone if it serves the country short of compromising my my values and all, right? So, mm-hmm. it's not easy. We're not born in Norway. We're not from New Zealand. So, let's just be clear about that, right? Um, so, we had to die. Yeah, having said that, there's a lot we can do, bro. And and, and my sense is, again, I, I know we're probably getting ahead of ourselves, but para feeling ko, ano na natin? Parindigan na natin. I think we're kind of the young Turks na, eh, <laughs> Like, mm-hmm. yeah, we're kind of the young, young Turks of this this thing. Let's Let's... Let's push. Let's push it. Let's push the envelope. Let's keep. Let's keep mm-hmm. on talking about it. No, because you never know whoever's listening. Thank you so much, brother. I hope you thank enjoy. You, thank you. Birthday, the other week. My utang pa rin ako sa iyo. Preferably, wash uh, restaurant in Philippines than in San Francisco. Cause it's more mahal. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. But keep it okay. posh. I owe you. Yeah, yeah. Posh. Ang ano ang ang ano, bro? Uh, your, your Sabbath. Enjoy your Sabbath. Thank you so much, bro. And and enjoy your rest from Brazilian yeah. Jiu-Jitsu. And now I'm gonna go and go back to my ano. Oh, FIFA. <laughs> Enjoy. Okay. No, no, no. All right. All right. Yeah. 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 God bless. Yeah. Thank you very much, Bye. guys. Yeah. Bye. Bye. Thank you very much, bro. Guy. Thank you. Bro. Okay.